I'm running seriously late today. We've got some friends coming round and I'm just gonna quickly stick um, the vlog post that goes online today on my mobile phone. I mean, I've, I've no idea if they mind being on the vlog or not, so maybe I'll see you a lot later or maybe I'll see you in a minute. Let's get the vlog post up. Well, that's one job done at least. Sophie's done all the preparations so far for our guests, so I'm, I'm gonna be yeah. So one of the best things about vlogging is I've got like a day by day account yeah. of like Jasper and the yeah. family and whatever we've been up to. So the editing, is it like self talk? Yeah. So that's, that's the problem. You wind up having a bunch of interesting conversations and you haven't bothered to get the camera out. And at the end of the day, you're just looking back over your day going, yeah, that would have been good. Who is Ben Gertzel? He is one of the world's leading artificial, artificial intelligence researchers. I mean, I, I think he's brilliant. I love him. He's kind of a bit of an artificial intelligence hippie. He works on general artificial intelligence, so not so much the sort of the deep mind end of things, more the sort of how do you cre how do you create a machine that thinks like a human? And the, uh, there's basically two approaches that you can take with artificial intelligence. You can either do what he's doing, which is where you basically th think about how we think and you sort of compartmentalize things. So you have sort of visual processing and audio processing and verbal processing and higher reasoning. And you've got all these different sort of sections and you tie it together. And so what he's doing is he's, he's tying that together through something called open cog. And that's kind of the approach that he's taken. I don't think that's the right approach, which is funny because of course he knows what he's doing, does it for a living. And you know, I'm just, Joe blogs with an Android laptop and some, you know, Ruby code that's highly experimental and doesn't work at all. I mean, I know why he does it that way and why most people do it that way is because if you do it that way, when it half works, it still half does something. Okay. Right? It doesn't work perfectly, but you can create a, you know, you can put that AI in charge of a, a little guy running around a Minecraft world and teach it to move blocks and build things and solve puzzles. And it, it has an ability to do something useful, potentially useful, even though it doesn't, you know, it's nothing like as powerful as the reasoning that a human being would have. Mm -hmm. The approach that I think is better, and I think ultimately the correct approach, is to find the design that scales uniformly from the absolute beginning all the way through to uh, a fully functional mind. And, and the problem with that is if you do it that way, it only works when it works. Yeah. You know, if it doesn't, if you, if you get something slightly wrong, the whole thing just collapses into not functioning at all mm -hmm. before it'll ever do anything useful. Yeah. There is that fear, definitely. Yeah. And honestly, I, you see, I think, they, I think people are looking at that the wrong way because they're sort of, in the, in the Ben Goetzel world where he's built a, um, you know, an artificial intelligence out of building blocks that all tie together, I think you'd absolutely have a point. I think, you know, what you'd create there would be very dangerous mm -hmm. and could easily get the wrong end of the stick and head off into the deep end of thinking, okay, I've been given this instruction to keep humans safe. Well, there's nothing safer than a dead human. <laughs> kind of thing or you know some kind of logical misconnect like that mm. the way i would be designing it there would be no intrinsic difference between the intelligence that was artificial and the intelligence that we have in our heads if we treat it well then it would you know grow up to be a well-adjusted normal artificial intelligence and if we <coughs> mistreated it you've got humans that mistreat other humans yeah and so that's my theory, okay, with artificial intelligence, is that you've got positive humans and you've got negative humans. Same way with artificial intelligence. And then the arti um, artificial in intelligence is being created by imperfect beings. As I, I know exactly what you mean. And if you had to program those in, or if you had to s explicitly teach it in a way that was different from the way you teach a child, 
then I think you'd be completely right. But as part of any child's upbringing, they learn what's right and wrong. I mean, I suppose it boils down to some extent to belief in that I, I believe in a, in a pure intelligence. I, I, I believe it is possible to create a mathematically balanced system that will operate intelligently in a perfectly balanced way so that it is you know completely free from any inherent design decisions that limits the way that intelligence can operate it's being learned child check yeah we're good okay jessica's still lying on the floor she's stolen his trike i my arm is knackered and i can't hold the camera anymore and i'm gonna have to cut out 99.999% of this, so I'll probably just pull out just a couple of bits. Oh, okay. See, this is great. What in the hell is the Three bits. Okay. <laughs> it's because otherwise, if you take it outside, it, you, all you hear is all you hear is. Oh, bits. is that is that what it does? Yeah, they're called micro muffs. It's so small and light. Yeah, that you can sort of quickly and easily have a look. Do you find yourself like looking into the actual lens or on yeah, the screen? Yeah, you have to look into the lens, otherwise it, it goes horribly wrong. Oh, yeah. That's so funny, they just need a cup of tea then. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just stay? Can you just stay? Looks like a nice sunset out there. It is a very nice sunset, yeah. What do you, what do you think to the camera then? I don't know, it's a nice size, okay. Not too heavy. It's really, really hard not to be looking at yourself on the screen. Hi. It's Hi. so much harder than it sounds like it would be. Yeah. From a... Oh! Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Can you get him off the seat? Not easily. Yes, I'll take that away from you. <laughs> Bye. Drive carefully. Bye. Bye. Yeah, so I now have to um, do a, a vlog post and uh, it, it's dark. Okay, I have no actual idea how I'm going to explain this at all. I had a very interesting sort of three hour discussion with Dennis earlier. Interesting guy. He works in IT, so he has a bit of interest in the subject. Basically, I think the problem boils down to this. There's two approaches that you can take to building an AI. You can try and build all the components and put them together. My personal opinion is that probably the way to create a true general artificial intelligence is to try and find what the underlying principles are and then build those into an application that will build a, a, a data structure that will manifest effectively, for want of a better word, the desired result, which is in this case, general intelligence. Because there's something very special about general intelligence. You can give it any problem you like and it'll have a good go at it, which is not like any other form of AI that has ever been created. I mean, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything massively wrong with taking the approach that people like Ben Goetzel and other AGI researchers take. I just don't think that ultimately that's going to lead to what they want it to lead to. I think they'll get, you know, closer and closer and closer, but it's going to be a case of diminishing returns and they're never going to get to that general intelligence that they're really looking for. Artificial intelligence is a massive subject and I can't possibly cover even a tiny amount of this in, in a 10 minute blog post, but I think it's quite an interesting subject. General intelligence in particular is quite an interesting subject. It's going to get more interesting in the near future because within sort of 10 to 15 years, computers are going to approach the processing capabilities of the human brain. I don't think they'll approach the intelligence abilities of a human brain by any stretch of the imagination. But I don't think that's going to be for lack of processing. I think that's going to be because of the lack of coherently written software that emulates the principles of intelligence, which is the key bit here, I think. Anyway, I hope you found this video to be interesting. If you have, remember to like it and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. This is the problem.
doing a daily vlog, sometimes you just don't need the house. Hmm. But that does give you the opportunity to cover totally random subjects, like artificial general intelligence. Hmm. Nothing wrong with that. I like a bit of variety in my vlog.